So when we are talking about attachment, oftentimes parents will come to me and say, well, how do I know if my child is securely attached? How do I know if I'm securely attached? Um, And so we always go back to um, the hallmarks of secure attachment. This was um, developed by Jude Cassidy. And um, you can, you can, you know, you can search Jude Cassidy and you'll find lots of different articles that she's written on um, attachment and different relationships. And, but these four hallmarks of secure attachment or basically indicators of a healthy relationship. These four things I think are really crucial as we are looking at our kids, trying to see, are we on the right track? Are we helping our kids develop the secure attachment that we want them to have? Do we have that same secure attachment that we want our kids to have? Because we know from attachment that we pass our attachment style onto our children. And so we have to work on ourselves as well. So you can, when we talk through this list, you can um, look at both yourself and your kids to see how are you doing? How are your kids doing? I know this was really helpful to me when I was trying to gauge kids that had come into my home and I knew we were making progress. But when I started kind of looking through this list, I could see the areas that we needed to practice, the things we needed to work on, the things that maybe we were struggling, the areas in relationship that needed a little more work. So the first one is seek and receive care. So this is, are you able to, is your child able to seek out care when they need it? So maybe they've had a bad day at school. Do they come to you and say, my teacher was really mean to me at school today, or my friends didn't talk to me on the playground. Do they seek you out for that care that they need emotional or maybe physical? Maybe when they get hurt, they fall down and they hurt themselves. Do they come to you and say, I hurt my knee on the playground. Um, Can you help me? And then when you offer care, are they able to receive the care from you? Because sometimes our kids will come to us and they'll say, I got hurt. And then you try and put a Band-Aid and they recoil and they run away and they, they don't, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it myself, I'll do it myself. So they're able to seek the care, but they're not able to receive that care. So that might be an area you can start working on. Another one is, are they able to give care? So sometimes kids can give care easier than they can receive care. And, um, but sometimes they struggle with the giving care as well. They don't see a need that someone has um, and go and meet that need. They don't see someone hurting and go to them and try and give them care. Um, and so that might be an area that you need to work on or that your child needs to work on. Um, one of the ways that we practice these um both the seek and receive care and the give care is through using band-aids. So in our house, we have a rule that you're not allowed to put a band-aid on yourself. It seems like a silly rule and people come to our house and they're like, what? You can't put a band-aid on yourself, but I just, I mean, I just cut my finger. You know, I just wanted to put a little band-aid on and I'll say, it's okay. We'll find someone that can put that band-aid on for you. And our kids know, and, and even, you know, Ryan and I will actually come to each other and say, Hey, I got a band aid, and you know, I've got a cut on my finger. Can the kids are in bed, they're all asleep, they're in bed and I'll and I'll say, Hey, can you put this band aid on me? Because one of the things it, it practices all of those things, I have to go and I have to find someone to put a band aid on me, I have to allow them to put a band aid on me. And then they get to practice giving that care. So on both sides of it, we're able to practice the seeking receive care and the giving care. Now this has taken lots of practice and it's not, band-aids are not the only way we do this, um, but we do this in lots of ways, um, going and getting an ice pack for someone when they're injured. Oftentimes an ice pack or a band-aid will, will fix all the hurts, especially for little kids. They want that care. They want to be taken care of most of the time. And so what we can do is we can give them those opportunities to both seek the care they need, receive the care and give the care. So the first one is seek and receive care. Second one is give care. And then the third one is the sense of independence and dependence. So whenever families come to us and they say, we have Um, this kid, they came to us at 14. We've only got four more years with them. Well, first of all, you don't only have four more years with them because as long as 
they are your kids, they're your kids. And you're gonna have an opportunity to keep pouring into them, but the relationship is what matters. So we try and force them into being dependent before they're ready oftentimes, especially when they are um, they come to us at an older age. But the reality is in order for a child to be completely independent, we need them to first be dependent on us. So we, we force that independence when the reality is we need to let them know that we as their caregiver are going to take care of them. We are reliable. We are trustworthy. They can depend on us to meet their needs. Then once they get that sense that they can depend on us to meet their needs, then we can start building some independence in them. We can start helping them develop that independence that they need. But being able to be truly dependent on a caregiver is essential before a child can move on to being independent. And then the fourth area is the ability to negotiate needs. So if you've used compromises before, that's an area where we're teaching our kids to negotiate their needs. We're giving them a voice. We're saying your voice matters, speak up. And when a child is able to negotiate their needs or when an adult is able to negotiate their needs, oftentimes I'll get some pushback from parents and they'll say, well, I don't want to have negotiations with my kids. I mean, how's that preparing them for the real world? When they go to soccer practice, they can't negotiate with their coach about whether they want to run laps. And I say, you want to bet? Because I've seen my son do it successfully. Because what my son, he went to soccer practice one time. He was probably... 13 or 14, he went to soccer practice and he'd kind of twisted his ankle in the game on Saturday. So it was, you know, Monday or Tuesday, they're having soccer practice. He goes to this coach and he says, hey coach, he says, I um, I don't think I can run laps today for warm up." And he said, would it be okay if I did push-ups or sit-ups on the sideline while the rest of them were um, running laps since I can't do it with my twisted ankle? And his coach said, yeah, absolutely. He negotiated his needs. He didn't come to his coach and say, oh, I can't, I can't, I I can't run laps, coach, I'm hurt. But instead he thought, okay, what is it that I can do instead to get my body warmed up? Because I'm here to practice. I can't do all the things, but I can do some stuff. And he negotiated his needs and his coach listened to him. So especially I have dads that'll say, there's no way, that's not going to happen in real life. I'm like, I've watched it. I've seen it happen. I've done it in my own job. When I was teaching, if my, te- if my boss came to me and said, I need this on my desk by five o'clock today, and then I knew there was no way I could get it on her desk by five o'clock, I would say, hey, I have a doctor's appointment right after school and I can't stay late. Can I get it to you first thing in the morning? And nine times out of 10, she would say, yes, absolutely. I'm not even gonna look at it till then anyways. And so I negotiated my needs. I was able to say, what is it that I need and use my voice to get what I needed. It is a real world life skill. It's also when a kid feels that level of comfort and that ability to negotiate their needs with you, it's a sign of that secure attachment being built in our kids. So we can do lots of things to practice these four areas for our kids, um, but those give you some really good hallmarks, some really good places to start with and say, okay, well, my kid's pretty good at this one, but maybe we struggle in these other two areas. And there's lots of ways that we can build healthy attachments in our kids.